the combination of changing the orifice tube and evacuating the system and doing an evaluation to make sure that the compressor and all of the components are working correctly, the combination of these will get you down into some very cold air conditioning that can make a 100 degree day a whole lot more bearable. But remember, if you're not a qualified technician, take this to somebody who knows. This video is for informational purposes so that you can understand at least the very basics of what goes on here. There's a couple other components inside the workings of the air conditioning system that will cause the air not to get to you correctly. One is vacuum operated and one is electronic. First let's deal with the vacuum. If you turn this knob that moves it from AC to vent to floor up to defrost and it doesn't do anything except keep the defrost on the windshield then you have a vacuum problem. More than likely your vacuum pump has gone bad on the truck. The other thing that can go wrong is there's a venting system that goes underneath the dashboard on the passenger side. This ductwork that's operated by, by a little motor on the side here pushes this vent up and down according to how hot or how cold. In other words, as you turn this knob, the hot and cold knob, left and right, this vent moves up and down according to how much heat or cold you need using this motor. Now, what happens is the motor never goes bad, but inside here where this inserts into this little flapper, uh, it breaks. And as a result, the flapper will flop down and all you'll get is heat. This is a real difficult job. If you've never attempted one of these to change one of these silly things out, and it's a poor design, really, it's a poor design. But if you've never attempted to change one of these items, then I suggest that you just go ahead and take it to the dealer or take it to a mechanic that you can trust to do this. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of these things, it's just a design flaw, and your AC will never work correctly if this flap is not going up and down. Now let's go into the truck and let me show you how the vacuum pumps work. On your early model trucks, your vacuum pump is located on the front of the motor, usually right underneath the AC compressor. And this is a mechanical pump. You'll see this type of pump on vans all the way up to 2003, and you'll see this on the F-Series trucks in the first generation. It's just a simple pump that, that creates vacuum to make your vents work. These go, these go bad periodically, somewhere between 80 and 120,000 miles depending on how much idling you're doing and uh, you can expect to pay about $120, $125 for this unit uh, plus installation. On a second generation power stroke you'll find your vacuum pump right up in here and right here next to this reservoir this is your vacuum reservoir and if you have 4x4 your 4x4 switch will be located right here on the late model trucks, your 4x4 is also actuated by vacuum pumps. So if your 4x4 isn't working and your vents aren't working, then more than likely you have a vacuum leak or a vacuum pump problem. If the vacuum pump is not kicking on, the first thing to do is check the fuses. Being in this business is kind of like going to church. You get to be reminded of things that you've learned years ago. On this particular excursion, we have a problem. And the problem is, is I'm going to crank it up here in just a moment, but the problem is, is that at idle, this needle goes all the way to about 200. Now, it's fully charged. We've pulled it down, recharged it. We actually put a new AC compressor on it and a new dryer, thinking that there was a problem in there. Even regardless of these repairs, we found that our pressures are way off. Now I'm going to start the truck and demonstrate to you what's happening with this truck. Now, these pressures are incorrect. This pressure should be right around 30, and this pressure should be right around... Uh, about 175 to 200 meg. As you can see, it's, it's way, way high. Upon investigation, I realized that when we shine a flashlight inside here at the condenser, it's clogged almost solid with road debris. Now, I know that this truck came from a rural part of the country uh, in Mississippi because it's my truck. My wife drives this truck every day, and I bought it from the original owner. So what happens is when we, we take the water hose and we spray it into the grill, watch what happens to the pressure. They all drop right into end line. And that confirms my suspicion 
that it's the condenser. The condenser is so good at that. It's right almost there now. Low side's got to come down a little bit. Look at that. The pressures are coming down right where they should be. This tells me that we're not getting the proper airflow. Now, this could also be a bad fan cut, but the investigation of the condenser reveals that it's all full of road debris inside there. Look at that. I mean, there's rocks and pebbles and it's just torn the thing up. Now I need to take the truck and pull the Freon out of it with a reclamation machine, replace the condenser, reinstall the Freon 134, and it should fix the problem. Let's see what happens. 